Folks, if I could, I have your attention. We'll come back to order here for the next portion of our hearing today. Um, as we move into the comment period, um, I'd like to um, uh, say that we're going to, we'll have uh, 50 minutes for folks that will be able to comment on anything that's been said today or anything you all want to bring forward. Uh, before we do that, I want to, I'm going to call on Miss Alvey here in just a minute to read into the docket some letters that we have received uh, on the, on this particular uh, I, our docket hearing. So um, before we do that, just remind everybody, one, that we'll have 50 minutes uh, for this portion of the hearing, and then we'll uh, move into 20 minutes for questions from commissioners or from anybody that is here participating in the hearing. Before I uh, ask Ms. Alvey to uh, read these letters into the docket, I would like to ask if there is anyone here uh, that wants to speak, if you could, if you're not an attorney, uh, would you stand up and let uh, uh, get uh, Tom to swear you in? And that way, when then when you come forward to make any comments, we'll get you, um, uh, give you, you know, get you to give us the, your name and address for the record. So, Mr. McIntyre? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. All right, and Ms. Alvey, if you would, uh, we have received several letters uh, that we would like for her to read into the record uh, for us today. Sure. Staff sent out um, the proposed plan to the TRC, which is Technical Review Committee. We sent those out uh, via email to those agencies, and these are the comments that were received back, and then any other comment letters that staff received as well regarding the project. So the first one is from MSD. It just says this project is located outside the MSD service area. No MSD comments. Uh, this is from uh, Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. It says, my initial concern is the portion of the building along Kentucky 53 that appeared to be placed on the state right away. See the last page of your attachment for an overhead view. Uh, there appears to be about nine foot from the face of the curb to the back of the sidewalk, given the 35 mile per hour limit and an ADT that exceeds 6,000 vehicles per day. The suggested clear zone distance that should be maintained is roughly 14 feet. This is my only concern with the new building, but we can address this at a later time if this truly is oh, the orientation and location of the new building. And you heard Judge say that the building was going to be centered, so this will not become an issue. Uh, this is a letter from Louisville Water Company. Um, it just basically says down here at the bottom that says no comment, location is outside the Louisville Water Company service area. This is an email from KU and LG&E. It says LG&E has no comments. Kentucky Utilities will be your electric service provider. This is a memorandum uh, from Jim Silliman, who is the county engineer. It says, with regard to the review of the proposed project by the Oldham County Engineer by the Oldham County Engineering Department, I have no review comments to provide at this time. Understanding the preliminary status of the project. Review input will be provided with regard to Oldham County construction ordinances and regulations as plans are developed. This is a letter that was received. Let me zoom out real quick here. I don't know how to do that. I don't have good vision. So. Um, from the Oldham County History Center. Uh, we received it on July the 10th. It says, Dear Commission, the future changes in the Courthouse Square are of great importance to us as a body and as the operators of the Oldham County History Center. The $2 million renovation of the Oldham County History Center has become an important part of the city's historic landscape. And during the renovation process, the Oldham County History Center has received two designated sites by the National Park Service on the National Underground Railroad Network. On September 20th, 2019, the Oldham County Historical Society went to an AOC meeting conducted by Judge Vogel at the fiscal court meeting to express concerns over the renovation of the Oldham County Courthouse and its possible demolition. A letter was submitted to express our grievance of the loss of the historic building, which is the cornerstone of the historic district in LaGrange. The LaGrange Historic District, established in 1988, met the criteria established by the National Park Service, which oversees and provides final approval of a historic district. In December of 2019, we met with Judge Vogel and submitted a statement on our position regarding the courthouse, copy attached, 
In that statement, we expressed our disappointment in the changes that were coming to the courthouse square and the impact that the upcoming construction project would have on the Oldham County History Center. In that statement, we also expressed our support for one of what we understood to be the only two available options. Now groups are working to establish other options and the possible, the possible savings saving of the original structure. Oldham County Historical Society would appreciate the opportunity to comment on and support that option if it becomes, a, becomes viable. We appreciate your time in doing a facility review of this building. Sincerely, Kevin Eldridge, the Oldham County Histor Historical Society Board of Directors. Miss Sally, if you would push that up just a little bit so we can get that, make sure it's on the record, on the bottom part, yes, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this was the letter that was submitted that was submitted um, with the um, Historical Society. It says, Dear Judge Fogel, the Oldham County History Center Board was given the opportunity to review the new courthouse renderings and have, and have a presentation by Judge Fogel regarding the options. We are disappointed that this construction project drastically changes the courthouse square, but we realize this that certain aspects of the operation of the courts require updating in order to serve the public. The courthouse square has been an important part of Oldham County and the city of LaGrange's history. Since 1838, the court system has served in this location and the site itself as an important part of the history over the last 182 years. It goes without saying that our initial thoughts were to go with the version that would retain as much of our existing courthouse as possible. As we continue to look at options and examine what we were retaining our, retaining, our minds were changed. Due to the needs of the administrative office of the courts, all that would remain of the original building would be the brick walls. The inner stairwell and other architectural features would be lost. While the three-story option retains more green space than the two-story option, we don't believe the small amount of space gained offs offsets the fact that the three-story option would tend to overwhelm the existing structures in downtown LaGrange. The three-story design does, doesn't have any great advantage in usable space even though it is 4,000 square feet larger and, a co and costs a million dollars more. The three-story has additional fenced-in parking on the second street side which is unappealing. Given the current options, of our board of directors voted to go with the two-story option because we felt it would, would less, it would less obtrusive of the overall landscape of the town of LaGrange. The two-story option is more in keeping with the town's architectural architecture, I'm sorry, and would be our choice. Judge Vogel has assured us that some of the historical pieces in the existing courthouse would be retained as decor in the new structure. There are design features that we now, that we know, will be honed, but we appreciate getting the opportunity to look at the designs and make comments. We are very concerned about the access the public will have to the Oldham County History Center. After completing our $2 million renovation, we feel the construction site itself will interfere with our business. We would like to request that parking, that the parking lot adjacent to the Oldham County History Center remain open to visitors and tour buses and still pull up by the center and park. And this was from um, the Oldham County History Center Board of Directors. We also received a letter from uh, LaGrange, Kentucky Main Street program. This was a letter, uh, they provided us a copy, but this letter is actually addressed to Chief Justice John Minton. It says, uh, Dear Justin, Justice Minton, the fourfold mission of the LaGrange Main Street program is preservation, restoration, economic development, and community growth. These goals and objectives are not at odds with each other, nor should they be regarding the Oldham County Courthouse project in LaGrange, Kentucky. It is possible to preserve the past and move forward for the next hundred years. It is our duty to preserve our history for our children and grandchildren, reliving memories and retelling stories of lives intertwined with this magnificent building. To destroy the second oldest courthouse in the state of Kentucky would be in direct conflict with that duty. All the while, we strive to build a new and exciting future for them with innovation and technology appropriate for a changing world. Change is inevitable. Some changes are harder than others. Some we can control, some we cannot. We can influence, provide guidance, and, a voice, and voice our concerns to those in control. Architecture is but one way of, of creating a record in time to be discovered by future generations. Many other courthouse projects have been accomplished in this manner, such as the Henry County Courthouse, 
by repurposing design and historical elements appropriate in the original building. None, no one is taking, I'm sorry, no one is talking about preserving the 1995 addition to the 1828 courthouse, but we believe the best solution for our community is to preserve, renovate as needed while honoring the original design and character by approving a modified plan that incorporates and restores the core courthouse structures into a modern, more spacious judicial center. The next letter that we received um, was from Preservation Kentucky. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I don't think I can read it that small, that far away. Okay, it says, I am writing to you on behalf of Preservation Kentucky, citizens of LaGrange and Oldham County, and Kentucky residents who support the preservation of Kentucky's historic resources and are stunned that the Oldham County Courthouse is being threatened with demolition. The immense architectural and historical significance of Oldham County Courthouse is meaningful to, the, to Kentucky and our American history. Its contribution to our nation's heritage is why it was listed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1988. Prominently placed in the center of the town square, this stately courthouse was instrumental in the creation and growth of LaGrange and it has become a beloved landmark for Oldham County residents and Kentuckians who appreciate our architectural, cultural, social, and governmental history. The Oldham County Courthouse is notable for its place in public history and the role of the courthouse square as the centerpiece of the community. Courthouses were sited on a square and set back from the street on all sides so that all four facades of the building were visible and to accommodate the crowds that gathered there during the county magistrate's monthly meetings as an important social and economic event for all residents. Research indicates that three courthouses were built on the current Oldham County site. The first was a temporary wood frame, wood framed building construction in 1827 and that burned and was replaced around 1828 with a permanent brick building that was damaged by a contained fire but still stands today beneath the current 1874 reconstruction. During the Civil War, the Oldham County Courthouse was occupied by Union troops. The 154th Ohio Infantry and the 54th Kentucky Mounted Infantry under the command of Union Colonel and Newcastle native Harvey M. Buckley removed and destroyed chairs, benches, furniture, plasterings, and fencing, and Kentucky received a claim of $1,100 from the United States for the damages sustained. Fortunately for Oldham County the and the Commonwealth, the courthouse was not burned or damaged beyond repair during the Civil War, and it survived. Unfortunately, it isn't fire, bombs, or powder kegs that destroy our historic courthouses today. It is the destruction of neglect and bulldozers eager to erase our heritage. Once a building, building is demolished, its history, architecture, and character can never be replaced. Courthouses throughout Kentucky are the heart and soul of the community in which they reside. Oldham County Courthouse is the second oldest courthouse in the Commonwealth with much of the 1828 building intact beneath the historic 1874 reconstruction, also intact. Our team of architects, engineers, preservation experts found it to be structurally sound um, architectural features from the 1828 reconstruction visible or protected by contemporary additions. They also certified that it could easily and cost effectively incorporate it into new judicial center or adapt it for another community purpose and save millions in tax dollars by doing so. If this significant historic building is allowed to be demolished, then a devastating precedent will be set to justify the demolition of other historic buildings in downtown LaGrange. It would also disavow the efforts and purpose of the LaGrange Historic Preservation District, LaGrange Historic Preservation Commission, and the LaGrange Main Street Program. It would be wasteful, uh, neg negligent, material and, and environmentally irresponsible, and irreversible travesty and dismissive of our heritage. Also, the proposal for a vasodomectomy and the salvage token architectural elements from the courthouse is ludicrous and illogical. Why replicate history when you can preserve it and what consolation is the retention of a few historic elements when the opportunity to preserve the historic elements in their entirety is feasible? Numerous Kentucky communities have demonstrated how a, a historic courthouse can be successfully incorporated into and meet the security and functional specifications of judicial centers and repurposed for another use, including Campbell, Webster, Gallatin, Robertson, Franklin, and Livingston counties. 
The Oldham County Courthouse, Courthouse has decades of service already behind it, and that, along with its historic significance, makes it equally as worthy of preservation. Heritage belongs to all of us. It's forged meaningful connections to place. Historic buildings connect us to each other and our shared history. They define our communities and contribute to their attractability. Historic buildings are how we identify with our communities and our attachment to our communities is an important indicator of how economically and socially successful our communities will be. Historic buildings are one of the greatest amenities. They attract residents and, tra and travelers seeking authentic experiences, unique surroundings, and a genuine aesthetic special to each place. Historic buildings are vital to our economy and tourism industry, which generates billions of dollars in annual revenue for Kentucky. If there were ever a time to conserve resources, budgets, and funds, it's now. Preservation Kentucky, along with other nonprofits and private citizens, is eager to assist with a solution that will both preserve this special landmark for the Commonwealth and provide a stellar judicial center for the courts. We respectfully ask that you vote on a plan that preserves the historic Oldham County Courthouse and give us the opportunity to present viable alternatives to demolition. And this was from Betsy Hatfield, who is the executive director. We also received a letter um, this morning from LaGrange Historic District Commission, but they are present. And then you also have, um, that was distributed, a letter um, packet of information from Strobo Barkley, uh, and they will also speak on their own, on behalf. Okay. That completes the uh, yes. letters that we received. Yes. Okay. Ms. Alvey, thank you very much for reading those into the record. And uh, we are getting ready here to move into the comment period uh, for folks that are here today to, uh, on this docket PZ20012. Um, we'll have 50 minutes uh, to um, uh, address any concerns or any comments that you want to bring forward. I would just ask that you um, be aware that it's 50 minutes total. So, you know, uh, please allow uh, folks to have an opportunity if they, you know, I think we had four, five or six folks stand up that said that they want to speak. So, uh, you know, let's, let's try to make sure that, that we allow enough time for everyone to be able to make their comments. So with that, I'll open it up uh, for whoever wants to come forward first. And I'd ask that uh, you give us your name and address for the record, and then uh, you can move forward with your comments. Hello. I'm Angie Campbell Akers. I am the chair of the LaGrange Historics Districts Commission. I would just like to read uh, the minutes from a special meeting that we held yesterday or yesterday evening. A special meeting of the LaGrange Historic Districts Commission was held on July 13, 2020 at 7 p.m. at the LaGrange City Hall. Present were all six members constituting a quorum. The purpose of this meeting was to issue findings and recommendations relative to our review and careful consideration of the current courthouse proposal subsequent to the presentation by County Judge Executive David Vogel to the LaGrange City Council on behalf of the Project Development Board on January 6, 2020. This report is intended to be filed and made part of the the record of this special called meeting of the Odom County Planning Commission on July 14, 2020, for the purpose of conducting a community facility review of the courthouse proposal to determine whether the plan is in agreement with the Odom County Comprehensive Plan. Those stated goals and objectives include preservation of historic resources, CLU-2-2, 2-1 and protection of historic structures by utilizing historic districts such as the LaGrange Historic Districts Commission who utilize architectural design standards and guidelines consistent with federal regulations promulgated by the U.S. Department of the Interior National Park Service for the preservation of historic properties. Upon consideration of the now chosen courthouse proposal approved by the Project Development Board on January 14, 2020, which entails demolition of the original 1828 courthouse and the 1874 changes, and upon motion regularly made and seconded, the Historic Districts Commission unanimously finds the current courthouse proposal is not in agreement with the historic district's guidelines for site and architectural design standards. 
Reference section two, page eight, and section four, page 14. The Odom County Courthouse embodies neoclassic Greek revival architecture from the early 19th century period and is without question worthy of preservation and protection. Therefore, the LaGrange Historic Districts Commission unanimously recommends that the Project Development Board modify its plans so as to preserve and protect the old courthouse and resubmit its revised plans for further review by this body. Being no further business to come before the commission, the meeting was adjourned. And this is signed by all the members of the LaGrange Historic Districts Commission. Uh, Ms. Akers, would you put that on the yeah. uh, screen there so we can record that? Sorry. Sure. I think you can see most of it there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Who would like to go next? Sir. And when you come to the podium or whatever, you, you take your mask off. You don't have to wear it. I mean, if you're Thank comfortable you. with that, so. <laughs> even even though I'm a lawyer, I took the oath. I don't, I don't know why they let lawyers lie. <laughs> I understand. Uh, Just name and address for the record. Um, I'm Beach Craig Mile, and I'm not here on behalf of anybody. Uh, just myself, uh, in a, uh, try to be quick. In the 1970s, I took a tour and went to Greece, and one of the places I went to was the Acropolis. And I guess when I walked in there, I could have looked up and just said, well, it's just a bunch of, of columns, okay? Well, this architecture here is modeled after the, the, the Acropolis, okay? It's neoclassical Greek standard architecture with trans, so there is historic quality. I'm not an architect, but I did, go all over Europe looking at architecture. Um, I also would like to uh, point out that the mission here today is to determine whether the comprehend whether this plan is in compliance with the comprehensive plan or in agreement with or in accordance with whatever those words of synonymousness means. And so the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan uh, are very uh, critical and, and emphatic that history is important. The very first of the units a lot of land use 1-3-4 requires that the comprehensive plan shall be compatible with historic properties and historic districts. LU 2-1 requires that the historic the, the comprehensive plan shall be sensitive to the impact upon historic sites and districts. LU 2-2 mandates that the comprehensive plan protect historic or culturally significant sites through the, through the use of historic districts, such as the LaGrange Historic District, whose report you just read unanimously concluded that it is not in agreement with their guidelines and their standards, and, and that the architectural design stand that the historic district should utilize architectural design standards compatible with existing historic structures and historic architecture. The historic the LaGrange Historic District is exactly such a body with guidelines and standards adopted pursuant to provisions of the National Historic Preservation Act of 1992, 16 USC 470. And further, LU 2-2-2 requires those who would work with the comprehensive plan, interpret the comprehensive plan, work with entities such as the Kentucky Heritage Council, whose report was just entered into the record, uh, requir re requesting consideration that it be saved, and to help communities uh, protect their historic resources. And 2-2-2 uh, and, uh, also uh, requires working with groups such as the Preservation Kentucky and the Historic District Commission, all of which have disapproved the plan to, that, any plan that would demolish the 1828 courthouse as, uh, as uh, renovated in 1874. And just so you'll know what the standards are for the rehabilitation of the historic district guidelines that are adapted from the 
National uh, Preservation Act, uh, their standards for architectural standards require that every reasonable effort shall be made to make it for a compatible use of property that requires minimal attention of the building and structure. And Mr. Strobo will explain the engineering respect to that as to what is actually required, what sort of shape the building is actually in. The second element of the report is that the original of the uh, guidelines, historic guidelines, are that um, the, uh, the original qualities or character of a building, structure, or site shall not be destroyed. And the third point is structures and sites that shall be recognized as products of their own time should be considered and shall destruction shall be discouraged. And number four, changes that may have taken place in the course of time are evidence of the history and development of a building and structure. And these these changes may have acquired significance in their own right, and this significance shall be recognized and respected. Um, one of the fifth guidelines is that distinctive stylistic features or examples of skilled craftsmanship, and you'll hear about that from uh, the engineering and architecture reports that are in your packet. Uh, uh, that and, and skilled craftsmanship that characterize a building shall be treated with sensitivity and deteriorated architecture features shall be repaired rather than replaced whenever possible. So with, with that, uh, I, would, I would close with a, obviously a request that the, that the, the building, and, I, and as an attorney practicing in this county forever, uh, I know we're growing, we need a larger courthouse, better facilities, but at, this, at the same time, uh, there, just, there needs to be plan C, okay? There needs to be another plan, uh, go back to the drawing board and figure out some way to, to keep it. Um, there was one letter that Stan Clousing will read from, um, Bill Lamline, former mayor of this town for years and historic, wrote the book on the history of LaGrange. He's uh, ill and can't make it here today and asked that his letter be read in to the record also. So uh, with that, I will close. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. All right, who would like to go next? Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Clausen. Sir. Good morning. My name is Stan Clausing. I'm a retired local architect. Uh, I, li I live in Crestwood, actually Centerfield, but my address says Crestwood. And uh, I like to make oh, my address is 5200 Richard Court, okay. Crestwood. Thank you, sir. And uh, I would like to read a letter I sent to John Minton, uh, uh, Spring Court. And then I also like to make a few comments, but that's okay with you. Yes, sir. Uh, this letter went to Judge Minton this morning. Dear Justice Minton, I am writing you regarding the current plans to demolish in full the existing Oldham County Courthouse. I am a registered architect, Kentucky 2200, co-chair of the current LaGrange Historic Districts Commission, having served on the commission since 2012. I have numerous historic projects that my firm, Scott Clausing & Company, has worked on, including the renovation addition to the current Oldham County Courthouse in the mid-90s. As such, my business partner, Fran Scott, and I have considerable knowledge of the courthouse structure. Our task as the renovation architects was to preserve and or repair or reconstruct the historic exterior and interior elements of the courthouse while calming new updated district court, district circuit and family courtrooms, circuit court records, driver's licensing and related supporting spaces. Do so, we went to great lengths to preserve the courthouse by rebuilding, reconstructing, and replacing those features that needed repair. This was attempted successfully on the, on the exterior and in the interior of the building. 
An old addition to the courthouse that was poorly designed and constructed on the north side was removed in our 1990s project. And a new addition, L-shaped addition was provided that was on the north and the east side. As such, a new north addition replaced the torn down addition and the original north end wall was slightly altered. The original north end wall of the courthouse was slightly altered in order to make openings for utilities and wider corridors. A new cupola constructed of aluminum framing designed to be very similar in height and detail to the original replaced the dilapidated cupola. Exterior windows, their sills and heads, including trim, were reproduced to match the historic detail of the buildings. The addition included a third floor that was within the heights of the original two-story structure. So everybody says third floor, the addition has a third floor. As it is now known fact that the existing Oldham County Courthouse is the second oldest courthouse in the state of Kentucky. As such, its significance to the Grange Oldham County and the Commonwealth is beyond question. It has stood as the center of the town square since 1875, over 150 years. It is one of the several historic features in LaGrange that still remain and have survived demolition. As the architects of record for the Oldham County Courthouse Renovations and Addition Project, having uh, the historic Maysville Cox Building Masonic Lodge renovation, which was an award-winning project, the presentation of the main tower building at Kentucky Street Reformatory, and the TARC main offices and stabilization in the historic Union Station Railroad facility in Louisville, and several other related projects, I feel well qualified to firmly state that the Oldham County Courthouse should remain, possibly be repurposed, and be preserved for the next 100 years. The plans for the new courthouse, prepare, new courthouse prepared by Sherman Carter architects are well done, and they're very pleasing. They, sh they should relocate the site of their proposed structure and leave the existing courthouse square the way it is. There are several sites within five minutes of LaGrange that would work, including one near the new Oldham County Correctional Facility on Highway 46, one near the entrance to the Kentucky State Reformatory at their main drive, across Jefferson Street behind and adjacent to this annex, the parking lot that's behind us and some other open areas, and in the old urban renewal area on Madison or Sar Street at first across from the new LaGrange Fire Station. These may have buildings on them, but when you're looking at a 100-year project, the cost to remove those structures and obtain those properties would be minor. We all know that saving historic structures is costly and that demolition of them is forever. Pictures, plaques, monuments cannot replace seeing, touching, feeling, and experiencing your history. I speak on behalf of, new, on behalf of numerous Oldham Countyans who are opposed to the demolition of the courthouse, the Grange Historic Districts Committee, the Oldham County History Center, a majority of the LaGrange City Commissioners and numerous local architects and design and construction professionals that you should stop the proposed demolition of the historic Oldham County Courthouse and advise that you uh, advise the, pro the Project Development Board to redirect the architects to look for another site. We feel like the, the options for another site were not nearly, were not uh, ever pursued. <laughs> Uh, as much as they could then. And then this, uh, that's signed off, and I'll leave you a copy of it here. And I'll put this here. All right. There's signatures on the second page. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clausen. Then a couple comments. Judge Vogel says that 80% of the existing courthouse was built in the 90s. I don't agree with that as the architect. 60% may be more in line. Uh, it can be saved. It's been inspected by uh, uh, Kramer, Studio Kramer Architects. It was inspected by uh, uh, Scott Kramer. It was instructed by KPFF, who's consulting structural engineers. And they uh, both found uh, not only historic art, they both testified in their own writing 
as to the historic uh, value of the building and the fact that the building can be reasonably saved and that there were no major structural issues. Uh, you heard that the Kentucky Heritage Council has come out in opposition to removing the courthouse. Uh, I just want to say that in a hundred years from now, I hope they will be saying, boy, I'm glad they saved that courthouse. We have a 200, over a 250 year old building here. How many, are like, how many buildings like that are there in, this, in Kentucky? You know, everything's torn down. Also, I want to comment that when the old state capitol in Frankfurt uh, became obsolete as far as its usefulness, they didn't tear it down. And it's in downtown Frankfurt. They moved it and, and, and built a new one across the river. Downtown of Frankfurt has never done better. They, they're still functioning. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. All right, just I'd like to remind everyone we're down to not quite 30 minutes here. So uh, I just make everyone aware that, uh, you know, we've got about 30 minutes left, about 31 minutes left here. So. Morning, sir. Morning. Take this off again. Yes. You guys get to see my COVID haircut. <laughs> Uh, my name is Randy Strobo. Uh, I'm an attorney that represents uh, Preservation Kentucky and others in the community of concerns about historic preservation. Um, my address is uh, 239 South 5th Street, Suite 917, Louisville, Kentucky, 40202. Would you spell your last name, please? S-T-R-O-B-O. -O. Yeah. So uh, we've heard a lot of testimony already. Um, I'm, I'm going to try not to repeat most of that, but I think it's all very important testimony. Um, but I wanted to initially talk about um, where we are in the process with this development and with this courthouse demolition and, and new courthouse. So the PDB board has approved the current version that, you, that Judge Vogel has presented today. Uh, that has not received final approval yet from the Court of Justice and the Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice. So that process is still ongoing. That's really important here because um, you all are charged with a very specific thing. And you saw the uh, statute earlier uh, that was up on the screen. I'm going to read it to you again. And this is what you all are supposed to do, be doing today. The commission shall, within 60 days from the date of its receipt, review the project and advise the referring body, whether the referring body here being the PDB, whether the project is in accordance with the comprehensive plan. If it disapproves of the project, shall state the reasons for disapproval in writing and make suggestions for changes which will, in, in its opinion, better accomplish the objectives of the comp plan. So you all have a duty today to take action. It may not stop the demolition, but you have a duty under state law and under your zoning ordinance to take action today. Okay? And that, again, that's important too because the main obligation of this body is to make sure that development, land use, zoning, and planning in the Oldham County complies with the comprehensive plan. This project is no different. You have to ensure and make us finding that this project is in accordance with the comp plan. And based on the testimony that you've heard already and based on the testimony that I've provided to you in letter form and, and today, we respectfully request that you find that this plan is not in accordance with the comprehensive plan and also to recommend that the courthouse needs to be preserved. So you have a, a letter in front of you from my firm. It's about 12 pages from us. You don't have to read it all right now. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. But also important with that letter are three attachments. Um, two report, one report from our architect, a report from a structural engineer, and a letter from the Kentucky Heritage Council. I think most of you are familiar with the Kentucky Heritage Council. They are the state agency that um, basically administers historic preservation across the state. Uh, historic preservation, historic preservation programming. They're the go-to entity in state government that is the authority on historic preservation. And as you've already heard today, they've uh, come in, they've expected the building, and they have found that this building should not be demolished. So just basically, I, I want to go through some important, why historic preservation is important in general. You've heard very specific reasonings for why this building should be preserved, and I support all of those, and my clients support all of those. But also historic preservation, it conserves resources, it reduces waste, and it saves money. Older buildings 
um, as you all are probably well aware, tend to be built much better. This courthouse has lasted parts of it since 1828. That's a long time. And it's built in a way, and we'll hear about that in a second, that it'll be able to be there for many decades and centuries to come. That's how things were built back then. Old buildings attract people and tourists. Um, the different levels, the different vestiges of their uses, the different kinds of corners and weird angles of the building, the mixtures of styles. Um, this gives people and the users of the building really something to talk about. It brings people in the community together, gives something to talk about. It's an attraction for folks. It also allows folks to witness the aesthetic and cultural history of an area. It helps maintain a sense of permanency um, and history and a sense of place. We all hear that's kind of a, a term of art right now. You hear a sense of place. That's what historic structures do. They, they contribute to that sense of place of a community of a historic downtown like LaGrange. And most importantly, there's no chance to renovate or to save a historic site once it's gone. Once, it's destroyed, once it is destroyed, as you all know, it's gone forever. I want to touch on a few things with this, with this specific historic courthouse. Um, a lot of it's already been mentioned, but, um, and a lot of it you can find in the reports that are attached to the letter. Um, but we did, uh, my clients were able to uh, retain a couple uh, experts, Scott Kramer, who's an architect who has a lot of historic preservation experience. He was on the Landmarks Commission at the city of Louisville, so set for several years, I think over a decade actually. Um, and then also KPFF, which you heard about before, which is a structural engineering firm. They, along with two representatives of the Kentucky Heritage Council, um, sometime in, in February, I believe, had a chance to inspect the building. And I will say that um, uh, for Judge Vogel, he's been very courteous, polite, and accommodating for us in all this, so I want to thank him for that. Um, he, he could have made it much more difficult for us, but, but he didn't. But we had a chance to uh, look at that building, and the reports that you see in your packet are a result of that. But just a few key points. Um, the original property for this courthouse was deeded in 1827, as you all heard, by William Barry Taylor, who was a first cousin of President Zachary Taylor, so I said Presidents Zachary Taylor and James Monroe. Um, you heard about when the courthouse originally was built, 1828. Um, the 1870, there were some fires, some things going on with the building, but essentially the 1875 structure has mostly been unchanged structurally and architecturally since then, with the exception of that modern cupola that we've heard about before. And um, our architect has determined that several aspects of that 1828 building are still incorporated in the, build, in, in the current courthouse. Uh, the Kentucky Heritage Council in the letter in your packet, um, I'm going to um, briefly state a uh, quote from them. They concluded that extremely sig significant as an intact example of a 19th century Renaissance revival influenced Kentucky courthouse with the present appearance of the historic district still very much dominated by the courthouse square. The most significant modifications to the building have been additive, which means that, well, leaving much of the historic fabric on the interior simply obscured from view. So there's a lot of historic structure and a lot of historic quality that is still there. You just can't see it. Covered by uh, ceilings, covered by um, additive uh, construction after. Uh, much of the historic building material, including the masonry, historic windows, visible historic framing elements, including the heavy timber roof framing that they personally witnessed, finished carpentry and monumental stair elements are still all intact in this building. Um, Mr. Kramer, the architect, um, found that the courthouse building appears solid and stable with minimal evidence of age due to use or neglect. He found that no, there, there was no obvious reason to demolish the structure. So in sum, KHC, the Heritage Council, Studio Kramer, KPFF, they all concluded that the historic courthouse is largely intact, structurally sound, and that the current configuration and site allows for additional options to redevelop the site to meet the needs of the county and the courts. There is no reason to demolish the historic part of the courthouse. So going back to what you all are charged with, which is to see if this is in accordance with the comprehensive plan. Um, Mr. Uh, Judge Vogel gave a, a, a summary of the events leading up to today and what the new uh, courthouse will look like. But you would notice, and I, I made sure I listened, he didn't mention comp plan once. He did not mention the comprehensive plan once. And that is your duty today is to see if this plan is in accordance with the comp plan. And I'll assert the reason why he didn't do that is because he can't say that. Your uh, comprehensive plan prioritizes historic preservation. On page 49 of the comp plan, it states, in quotes, uh, I'm quoting, even though Oldham County is now a predominantly residential suburban community, vestiges of the county's past rural, agricultural, and historical character are clearly evident. These vestiges 
contrib contribute to the attractive nature of Oldham County as a residential suburban community. On page 51, due to the finite supply of structures that reflect Oldham County's past, efforts should be undertaken to preserve the, horse, the historic structures. You've heard previously about the many goals and objectives in your comprehensive plan and comprehensive plan update that reference historic preservation. I'm not gonna go through all those in detail again, but just for the record, uh, land use goal one, land use goal two, um, and also the business and industrial goals and objectives all require this commission to prioritize um, and discourage historic preservation. And most importantly, and I kind of ruined my thunder a little bit, on page 49, demolition of historic structures should be discouraged. This is a quote from your comp plan. Adaptive reuse of existing structure, structures should be encouraged in order to preserve and protect the historical character of the area. So your comp plan, no doubt, prioritizes historic preservation. It discourages demolition of historic properties. It is your duty under the statute to find that this plan is in accordance with your comprehensive plan. You cannot do that with what, the way your comprehensive plan is written today. Um, not so pertinent, but also I think important, is your zoning ordinance. Your zoning ordinance also requires historic preservation review. And that includes any time there's a new development plan and any time there's a new land use or zoning district proposed, historic preservation is in your, in your zoning ordinance and it requires that type of review. And also very important, and this is a reference to your comp plan again, your, comp, your last comp plan update referenced the gap in your zoning ordinance that was preserved or reserved for historic preservation. That has since been filled. And you now, and LaGrange now has a historic districts commission that you just heard from that vehemently opposes this uh, demolition of the building. So if this was an ordinary application, there is no doubt that historic preservation would be a priority and that, it, in my opinion, would be very difficult for the applicant to show that um, uh, demolition is warranted. So again, um, this body can take action that could help to protect the demolition. Um, we respectfully request that you all make findings that this proposed plan is not in accordance with the comprehensive plan and that you recommend, again, the, the um, statute requires you to recommend if you disagree or if you find it's not in accordance, that the historic courthouse is not demolished. Um, we know that the, um, what the PDB board wants, um, what the county needs in some respects, can still be accomplished even though you are preserving the um, historic courthouse. One other quick note, um, and this is more procedural. My clients, um, several of them were not uh, willing to come today to testify because of the COVID crisis. Um, you all have obviously taken very good, very good steps in, in making it easy and safe for us to testify today. A lot of folks didn't know about that. Um, I've been participating in these things all over the state. Um, all over the state, um, Frankfurt, Louisville, Lexington, and different courts, and there is always now a way to remotely call in and testify. So we think that was an issue here, not allowing some of our clients to come in and testify, and we would ask that in any further hearings that you have, that you provide a way to remotely testify in, at these hearings. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Mr. Strubble, thank you. All right, anyone else that would like to speak? Mayor. Good afternoon or morning. What a time it is. Could I get the picture of the courthouse back up here, the proposed plan, please? Uh, I'm John Black, 108 North 5th Street, LaGrange, Kentucky. Just the picture of the courthouse that the judge has over there, the proposed picture. Yeah, right there. That's good. But anyway, uh, I'm 108 North 5th Street, LaGrange, Kentucky. Certainly glad to be here today. Um, Mayor, President of the City of LaGrange, and I'm here today to somewhat give the opinions that I believe that the City Council believes to be the case, but um, for the sake of transparency, Judge Vogel is my brother-in-law. Uh, he's married to my sister. So uh, uh, I have to be careful somewhat what I say, but at the same time, because I'd like for him to still come to my house, I'd like to go to his, but I have a duty to do to represent the people of LaGrange and 
as my duties as mayor, so I feel like I have an obligation to come here and try to suggest some things to your, your body here as to what I think the position that we have here in the city. Understanding while this is exempt under KRS 100 that there's no reason that the county has to listen to anyone other than because this is an exempt situation, but still yet, I think still the county, we're, let's say this together. We will get through this. We will get through this together. Can we say that? Just kidding. But anyway, we will get through this and hopefully when we come through this, we'll be better by having had these discussions. Uh, I will say that Judge Vogel has invited me to all the project development board meetings of recent past and I've attended I think every one of them and he would understand and agree that I have been very outspoken to the architects in some early going drawings that folks this just won't fit in our city and I blatantly told the architects that and they, they say he pretty much says what's on his mind evidently but that's what I've said to the architects but that was prior to this viewpoint. This, this, this is probably the best that they've come with for sure. And uh, they've come a long ways, but to be honest with you. So he has invited me there, so I've been there, but I have provided my dislikes, my frustrations, and just basically said to the architects, we can do better than this, especially in the city of LaGrange and this being the mainstay of our downtown, can you work with us to do better? We've heard that we've heard this on social media, this this project, and as Judge Vogel said, I don't care what people in California think about this. I don't care what you think in Massachusetts or Florida or everywhere they're commenting from. What I care about is what we as a community together think. That's all that matters to me. How can we make this as good as we can for our town of LaGrange and our Oldham County? Uh, we here in LaGrange, we see things look a little bit differently than the rest of the cities and the counties. Prospect, Goshen, Crestwood, I don't know if they have any concern whatsoever about preservation of their areas. I'm sure they want nice things. They want open land, farmland, as in Goshen Prospect, but Crestwood, I don't know what their particular interest is to make sure Crestwood, but here in LaGrange, we think that our historic value is important to our city. Uh, some years, 30 years ago, I got 15 minutes to go, but I'm, I'll cut it short. Uh, we did begin the historical district here in our city. Actually, I was mayor then about 30 years ago, and it was a tough decision one night, but I did break the tie to create the historic district commission in our city. Um, Judge Vogel remembers those days. He and my sister and himself, we talked about that and, and uh, concluding that uh, it would be good for our city. So uh, I know Judge Vogel is loves history and he, I think he loves preservation but in this instance he feels in the project development board he, he gets the blame from everything but this is the project development board's decision to do this but he understands the importance of preserving our, our things in our city um, I would uh, continue to urge and su suggest that even your board and any other boards in the future please consider trying to retain just 20 percent that we say this building has of historical value. I think it's important that we try to figure out somehow, some way to, hate, to save the, the, that midpoint of that, of that structure. Uh, we have 23 million dollars to expand and I was hoping that through my efforts, judges efforts with the architects, we could find a way that a portion or a piece of our history could be kept and uh, we may could hang a picture in that old portion of, of Kevin Jeffries, of Judge Vogel, of uh, different ones where because here in our city, between ourselves and our tourism commission, we're trying to make part of our town tours part of our history. That's what we're trying to do is, is buildings and things that may, someone might find important to view. but. Today we received a uh, six passenger golf cart from Cunningham Golf Carts that we're going to try to, through tourism, to try to take people. Now some folks might say, we don't have any history here to see. And I can understand that. There's no president's been born, no, no important people other than you. You've been born here. But uh, we, we, some people might say we don't have any history, but you all know that uh, over time we've lost the interurban depot that's set where now is the 
De Haven, it was a county parking lot now. There was an interurban depot there. There was the Warspring building. Directly across the streets, there was a beautiful house owned by Dr. Blades. Back in the day, it was now the city parking lot. And that's sort of reason the Historical District Commission came about, was try to save some of those structures that we hated to lose, but we had to get some control of that. So, um, I just check my notes. Uh, as you look at that three-story, that midpoint of that building, the truth of the matter is, I believe, and I think Judge Vogel would agree with me, I think there's three stories inside that midpoint of that building. I think Stan alluded to it that there is, so if there is three stories in there, I think the architect's position is the floors need to become higher in a newer type of formation of, a, of the courthouse, so thus the building has to be pushed up in the air more, more or less taking making it not in total appropriate look for our downtown, but seems like me there's three stories in that structure, so maybe with some architects we can make that happen. Uh, honestly, that's a, that's a good looking, nice building if you want to put it on a vacant lot somewhere that it was a brand new structure. It'd be, be perfect. There, you couldn't do it any better than that right there, but if you're trying to keep a piece of it in our downtown, then I would hope that we could try to uh, keep just a small portion for some resemblance of our history of our city. There are folks who say that uh, keeping that in our downtown is not important. I disagree with those who do. I think there's a lot of people that come to and from this courthouse every day for driver's license, for court appearances, for, for, for grand juries, you name it, they come here and for those who say, let's take it elsewhere, I think they're making a mistake. If you've been to Owen County, just Owen County. Most of these little counties that, where they move these courthouse on a bypass have become a ghost town. Buildings have closed up, ter terribly bad economic conditions, so I would not suggest that under any means. Um, yeah, just to remind you, I mean, just sorry, sorry uh, Mayor, it's uh, down to about 10 minutes. So I, yeah, want, I okay. think there's a couple other folks that would like to speak, so. Okay, um, I realize that uh, every bit of the space that Judge alluded to, this new court system and all the security measures, they need every bit of it. But I just wish that through our efforts between the judge, myself, and anyone, that we could insist to the architects there's got to be a way to save this 20%. There's got to be. I mean, you know, if we, if we can put a man on the moon, surely we can save 20% of this courthouse. So I just think I'd like to continue to push a little bit more. Um, seems to me today, most people that are current concerned about this courthouse is just us here in the city of LaGrange. I'm sure this meeting was advertised well, wasn't it, Amy? But no one in the county really cares. You know, they could care less, as Judge says. They don't even know what's sort of here. As long as they get their driver's license taken care of, they're good with it. But we here in the city, you know, we, we care about some of these things, and I'd like to uh, hope to see if we can continue to work on this plan and help things out. I'm going to say this about my brother-in-law. There's nobody who loves history more than David Vogel. There's no one who's a bigger cheerleader for David Vogel than John Black. I think he has done wonderful things throughout this county trying to clean this county up. I think this guy right here, my brother-in-law, he's from Minnesota. Wasn't even born here, but he's taken such interest in this county, it's unbelievable. You look around this county, it's clean. It's, it's, it's welcoming to the, to the outside person. So there's nothing that he hasn't done. But lastly, he thought so much of this county he worked himself to put a statute of the person who founded this county, Colonel William Odom. I mean, that's how much this guy loves history, and he believes that this is the best possible structural working type of courthouse that we can put in place. But um, I would continue to work with Judge Vogel and the committee and the Project Development Board, even though ch they chose differently to go a different way, but I still feel like that is there a way to save the 20% as we've described that internal part and make that a continuation of our history of our city? So that being said, uh, thank you for your time and, and uh, I hope Dave would still talk to me after, after today. Thank you, Mayor. All right, anyone else would like to speak?
Got about seven and a half minutes here. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is uh, Jesse Pace. Uh, I live Jesse in Payton? Pace, P-A-C-E. Oh, okay. Bill, Bill Pace's son. Okay. Um, I live at 5015 18 Mile Creek Road, Westport, Kentucky. Um, I was the original guy who went in and did the investigation on the courthouse for Vogel um, and, and for the preservation of Kentucky. I'm the one that found out um, that what John Black said that originally 20% of it is still intact. Actually, 85% to 90% of the actual 1820 courthouse is still there. It's actually encased by the 1922 facade you see now. And anything that's older than 50 years is considered historical. It doesn't matter if, you know, my, my house I live in is built in the 70s. Technically, it's considered historical by the preservation of Kentucky. So I'm just going to be short and brief and just say that this courthouse is by far 198 years old. It is the second, the, what is it, the, the, it's the second oldest still standing courthouse in the state of Kentucky. There's been a lot of, of craftsmanship that's gone into this. The brick, the, the, uh, the timber frame structure, everything has been into this. And there's near extinct um, species of wood that has been put into this court, courthouse, yellow poplar. There's uh, the, the brick that's underneath the 1920s brick is handmade. It was made in a kiln from local, local um, uh, people here made the bricks that went into this. And the, their, their families are still living here today. Um, there, there's lo local mills that provide the lumber for this courthouse. I just feel this courthouse should be saved. And if this helps by any means, awesome. That's all. Uh, just something I wanted to clear the air with. Okay, Mr. Price, thank you. All right, anyone else that would like to speak? We've got about. Six minutes left here. Anyone else? All right, seeing no one else get up, uh, we will move into the next portion of the hearing, which is uh, questions by commissioners and anyone else that has spoken today. Um, I would like to first ask that the commissioners, uh, if we have any questions, I'd, if you would lean forward so I can see you to make sure because these panels are a little hard to see through. So uh, we'll open it up. We have 20 minutes and we'll get the questions from the commissioners and then we'll open it up for any questions that, that uh, folks that have been here, you know, that are here uh, that would want like to uh, uh, add to. Yes, uh, Ms. Davis. I'll turn your mic on, please. Is the little cupola still going to stay on top of the middle of the building? I see it here, but nobody has spoke about it. Is it going to stay there? Uh, Judge, would you like to? There? Okay. Would you like to address? Me? Why don't you come back up? We can get it on the uh, recorded. Uh, will the cupola stay with the building? The answer is yes. You can see the in the uh, design here. The cupola is the primary the point of this building. The highest part of the building um, and we want it to be there. The bell tower is, or the bell is connected with the cupola. Uh, the bell is uh, hit by an electronic striker right now. Uh, if we want to rewind a little bit here, the bell went silent for many years. I couldn't tell you exactly how many, but uh, in 1993, LaGrange Rotary initiated a project to try to raise the uh, level of, the, you know, ambiance of the courthouse lawn. Uh, one of the things that, uh, I say this humbly, but one of the things I wanted to do, I was the leader of that group, uh, was to restore that bell because it had been silent for years. We do have it. It's rung for the last uh, 22 years. We finished in 1998. It'll stay in there. It's an old bell. We've got pictures of it. Uh, you know, many things, I appreciate Jesse Pace and others uh, went into the ceiling. A little discouraged to hear the Jesse say that anything uh, 50 years or older is historic because I think there are probably several, uh, you know, of us in here that <laughs> are, are, must be bordering on ancient or something. That a little hope not, but uh, yes. Was that it, part it of the original? There. Is that the original? Part yes, I believe that was the uh, that is the original bell that was there. Right. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Davis? Okay, uh, Mr. Hampton. Uh, this is for Judge Vogel also, please. Full disclosure, since John was brought it up, uh, 
I took David's wife to the pro senior prom, so I just don't want him to get mad at me. So. Just want to be sure. Just want to be sure. Yeah. Uh, I heard, I've heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> A couple of things. Uh, you already cleared one of them up, but I don't understand exactly how to look as far as the transportation concern on the east, uh, where the, they're going to move it to the center that you said. Yes. How is that symmetry on this picture on the left here? Uh, if you move that building to the left and, ce and center it, then the symmetry is off. The entrance going up the middle. Actually. Oh, the entrance, the sidewalk, are you talking about? Well, I'm just saying the way it's designed, if you move the building to the center, yes. then the whole symmetry is off. Of uh, the... Right. Well, they, uh, the, the, the hardscape's going to have to be uh, up changed and updated and redone to make that come out symmetrical. Okay. I didn't have heard anything about that. But. Yeah, right. That's uh, right. That's... That's a part of the plan. That's a, uh, you're not considered too big a problem, uh, you know, at this point. Uh, it's, uh, but we want to get the, the building in the center of the lot, away from the street, uh, and, uh, and center it up. So, yeah, the, that's, the architects assured us that that won't be a problem, that they'll be able to redo, redo the, you know, minimal cost. And I know that, uh, you know, we know about opinions, but we've got, several experts that you have as well as today and I don't understand how it can be so uh, distant so far apart on what the final judgment was on the uh, about the building the condition of the building I mean you have said and the people that you you've got it, have said it's just terrible and can't be saved it will not can't save it can't save it and then we got people that say at least 20% of it can be saved. So I don't know how that can be. Well, um, it may be a breakdown in communication. I don't think I've ever said that the oldest part of the structure couldn't be saved, but the cost of saving it uh, was higher than what we thought it was worth paying for. Uh, the, in other words, in order to save the oldest part of the building, the part I showed in the beginning, all we're going to wind up with is, is a facade and, and the two side walls. The interior cannot be saved to create the court system, the circulation paths, the, all the rooms that need to be fit on the inside of the building. That Those walls uh, taking up the first uh, 40 feet or whatever it is that are, are not present in that building, the building starts pretty quick, quick after the front facade. The other building goes way back, and that going back creates tra uh, transfer, um, creates issues with the travel paths, with the layout of the courtrooms, a lot of things that, that are going to, that, that's what forced the three-story building option in order to accommodate everything it needed to fit into the building by hanging on to that front section, the architects suggested we had to go to three stories to get that done. And, uh, and, and it was an extra 5,000 feet and an extra uh, several million dollars to, to, build, to build up like that. And then, then you'd wind up with an overpowering building in LaGrange that was taller than everything else around us except the church steeple across the street. So that, we thought that undermined the historic character of downtown LaGrange having a building like that sitting there. Now, it was suggested that there are other places that we could go. I heard Stan mention that. But uh, those really, did any of those places strike you all as realistic uh, down here in, 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 in Sour Alley or uh, uh, forgotten what else? Uh, he had a couple other we just don't think it's realistic to, to do that. We think this is the place it needs to be. This is the, the focus of our community. It's a historic circumstance. I heard the term repurpose uh, by somebody or adaptive. Adaptive is not, uh, you know, we're not trying to adapt to something else. Uh, part of this is not uh, in the mix of the decision is not causing you and me and everyone else who lives in this county 
to have to pay the upkeep on the building for the rest of our lives and everybody else's life. Uh, two buildings, they're not free. Somebody said, well, turn that into condominiums or something. No, uh, we can't do that. Uh, that that's a structure that's going to have cost and these, e these solutions that people put forward, well, this is easily done and it's reasonable cost. And these are all subjective words that when you start to take them apart are not going to turn out to be uh, what they say. Now, keeping the front section, I heard John, okay, we're, you know, copacetic. I know he's, 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 he's agonized over this thing as I have from the beginning. None of us on the project development board were in a rush. We looked at everything, we turned this Rubik's Cube around and around and around, and finally we said we just, we just got to do something else. We couldn't come up with a solution that worked. Everybody says there is one, but yeah, I've got one. How much of the front lawn are you willing to give up to keep that front facade and two side walls? Okay, I mean, we didn't want to chew up any more of the front law than is absolutely necessary because that is also part of the heart of this town. And uh, that the, the, the solution, uh, you know, we looked at one that kept that, put everything on the west side, came down 2nd Street, but, you know, put a big building facing all the history center and everything. They could, well, we thought that obstructed all the view. It took away the beauty of the, of the landscaping. Uh, we're stuck with a, with a square here that we can't make any bigger. And so we're trying to use the land as wisely as we can and fit a building on it that is gonna be functional and purposeful and beautiful. And uh, the trade-off is that we have to say goodbye to a look. Even if we kept the front part, the look is gonna be gone. It's not gonna be the same look as you see from the corner of First and Main now. When you, Look over there, I agree, it's a beautiful look. But we're between a rock and a hard place with no place to go other than make a change. And we're gonna come up with another beautiful look. So I didn't say the interior couldn't have something done, I just said the, the trade-offs are so high. And, and I don't know what the front door would be because that, that the security just will not work on the front door that we have there now based on magnetometers and x-ray machines and people coming in and out in the same space. Mr. Hampton, is that the... No, I'm, I'm not quite finished. Okay. Well, it's... Uh, yeah, I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity sure. for questions. Absolutely. So, okay. Uh, I'll just... I want to agree with most of the things John said, and uh, so I'm not going to go back over that uh, anymore. I don't believe we should move uh, the courthouse. I like... I even like the design, but uh, I do respect the people who are sympathetic to uh, saving the historic part. Uh, I, I would, I'm certainly for that. Uh, I guess that'd be all. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Douglas, and then after your question, I'm gonna open it up for any folks here to four questions in the audience. Well, <clears throat> you knew I was going to probably ask questions because I always do, so I may as well get started. I um, heard a lot of discussion from both sides, and I believe Judge Vogel did a very good job on his presentation. I think everyone did a very good job on their presentation, but I've heard a lot of different options by everyone, but not a lot of solutions, but a lot of options, like for instance, uh, the Odom County Historical Society seems like their main concern is, is it going to interfere with their traffic going to their location? I mean, that's the bottom of their letter. They basically say, if this renovation goes on, is it going to interfere with our existing traffic? So I, I, I guess my question is to somebody out there besides Judge Vogel, did anyone discuss it with AOC, with the judges, what they needed? what their needs were in the courthouse for what they have to have done, not just because of what our historical preservation is, but what are the needs of 
the community for that courthouse, what the judges need, what the clerks need over there. Had, did anyone out there discuss that? I know the judge did. They were on the committee. The, uh, the administrative office of the courts met with all of our judges here, Judge Crosby, Judge Wheeler, Judge Conrad, uh, interviewed them extensively as to what they felt their needs were, the, how the functionality of their court, what they, uh, how they wanted it to work, where it should work. Uh, and, and so they, everybody was you know, surveyed and spoken to extensively and feedback received from. So, and Judge Crosby was on the... Yes, Judge Crosby is uh, on the... Uh, on the on our committee. Right. Committee. Right. And he, is Judge he, Conrad. And he was... And they were the ones presenting what their needs were... Yes. ...to right. accomplish the courts. Yes, they did. Okay. And, and, and my... Uh, the, the current building, uh, Stan said that it was 60% different. I don't know where our... Uh, I had our maintenance people measure the building. I was told there's 25,500 square feet in the existing building, 5,200 square feet in the historic front part of it. Our new building is going to be 52,000 square feet. It's going to be, you know, twice as much footage as we have there now. So, so you're not an architect or a building engineer, but I haven't really seen a building engineer except for a retired architect and I don't know if there's a building engineer here but <clears throat> I'm not sure what the existing foundation is of that old building and I don't know how you would able to add on 30 40,000 more square footage to the existing building I, I don't know I mean I'm not sure it's, uh, it's spreading it out and putting it up two stories I did and, uh, see on Mr. Strobel's portion, I guess Mr. Kamer wrote that there was some derogation of already of the foundation in the older section, correct? Right, I, right. I, I don't believe that uh, any of the uh, you know, opposing party has done any uh, groundwork there. I'm told it's full of rock and uh, I know one of the ideas in their drawing was, uh, was a, was a uh, Sally Port. Basement. Basement. Well, you know, I've been to uh, Chicago, been to New York, Washington. If you go into an underground basement, most of the time you have to take a really sharp move down to get in there. If it's an elongated move, it would take the better part of Second Street to make one long sweeping Sally Port. Well, does anybody really want a, a big hole like that <laughs> all the way along Second Street? It would just really gum up a lot of projects. And uh, we brought up a basement uh, garage to the architects, and uh, we were assured by everybody that there was, uh, it was a very expensive process to get down and dig out that rock and, and put a basement in there. I wanted the basement in the new building because I don't think we have an adequate fallout shelter downtown. I mean, you know, we get a tornado coming, uh, <laughs> We don't have any place really underground to go, but uh, I was dissuaded by the by the uh, ge uh, ge geography or the uh, you know the groundwork problems, okay. and there might be some springs in there too. I think they've had springs issues in the past. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Mr. Pace, do you have something to add? Uh, well, I can answer that. The the actual stone foundation that's underneath the original courthouse is still strong. Um, I'm I specialize in log cabins. Like right now I'm restoring Zachary Taylor's schoolhouse right now. It was built in 1785. And that cabin has not moved. I know it's a lot smaller, but it has not moved at all. From what I have my findings of climbing underneath that whole structure, I went underneath the whole courthouse. It has not moved. And there is, so each, the good thing about, I don't have a picture up here, but um, each room, so you have your driver's license room, you have your, you know, you have your probate office, you have your judge. Each room has its own foundation structure underneath it. It's not just all around the outside. Each wall is broken up by 28 inches thick of brick walls is what's holding everything up. And, and, that, and, and that in itself, um, Barry, what, what you were asking, um, it would not cost very much to actually restore the courthouse. 
it would actually cost more to tear it down than it would actually be to restore it. But um, I would, I would, I mean, I'm restoring a 280 year old. But you're, cabin. but you're saying restoring the existing building. Yes. You're not saying the space that's required for ALC, the administrative office, yes. of course. I mean, they're asking for more space. I yes. mean, you're. No, I understand. Are I you understand saying that. that the cost that 22 million or whatever is the cost that would restore the existing courthouse? No, no, not at all. I'm what, what, what I'm stating is is they can utilize the, the um, Scott Kramer actually seen these plans. They were very in-depth. Um, that you could actually utilize the old courthouse to, to house the judges. You don't have to, and they could be away from the public and then they could add the back piece onto it. They could keep the old courthouse there and reuse it. it it's not, I think back in 94, 95, I, I might be off on the ages or on, on the years, but um, a man approached the courthouse and said it's going to cost uh, $52,000 to do everything and it, nothing got done and I'm saying maybe now it might be a little bit more than that but structurally from what my experience and what my father's experience was that thing is will last another 200 years e even so. Uh, Mr. Pace we're about to run out of time right. here but I would let me ask the commission if uh, We've still got some questions, and I, and I, you know, I don't want to rush this along. But are you okay with adding 10 minutes to our to the time here? Can I get a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Okay, have a motion second. to add 10 minutes to the uh, uh, questioning time. Do I have a second? second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition, say uh, same like sign. Okay. Well, I had 10 minutes to our uh, to our clock here. So, Mr. Douglas, is that to complete your I, I question? Just, yeah. just to follow up on, you mentioned that the structure of the foundation was mm -hmm. intact. Um, have you read Mr. Yes. Kamer's yes, report? Yes, I actually, I actually, um, I actually gave him a tour, and gave them the tour on it. So he mentions several support floor joists. Yes, there's being right. unsupported, and there was some weakness in the foundation near yes. those supports. Yes. And the reason and those for that bricks is were loose and falling but, apart. But the, orig the original foundation itself is still intact and it's still good. What happened is they took what we call band-aids. What they band-aided over, that's the part that's falling apart, not the original original. You actually, I have, I had sent him pictures and actually, he's actually the architect on the other cabin I'm doing right now. We talk about this all the time. Mr. But, Grace, I, yeah, sorry, I hate to. You know, yeah. rush you, but we, uh, we've yeah, got me, several little questions we need to get answered here. So, Mr. Strubble? I'm, I'm finished for now. Okay, thank you. I just want to just a few things, Mr. Douglas, if you don't mind real quick. So, Mr. Kramer's report, I think you're looking at it right, right, right. now. Um, just to talk about the, the ability to design a courthouse that can incorporate the old courthouse but still have the space needed that the AOC, we think, needs. Um, he talks about that, his last paragraph attached to this document is a simple sketch that identifies a possible footprint for the redevelopment of the site to include the existing historic courthouse into a new courts complex. Um, he goes on to say it's not meant to be a literal third option, but merely evidence that additional options to redevelop the site are possible. So one other thing I wanted to mention, oh, and while we're on the reports, if you look at the next report, um, the KPFF report on the second page, on their conclusion, the last sentence says, in our opinion, the deficiencies noted as minor are minor in nature, he's talking about the deficiencies that you just mentioned, are minor in nature and do not affect the overall structural stability of the building. Um, I don't think a, a professional engineering firm um, on their letterhead and a, a well-known historic preservation architect would say that stuff if, if it wasn't true. Um, I'll also say that, you know, we, my, the reason why we got involved with this so late is because we, my clients did not learn about the possible demolition of the historic structure until around December of last year. As soon as that happened, they hired us, a law firm, to see what we could do to help um, preserve that building and also these experts and, and like I said um, Judge Vogel graciously allowed us to inspect the building on one day in February but if we had more time we could further develop these plans and also we you know we've offered that help free of charge to the PDB and to the county and we've also you know have a lot of great people that are willing to help like the Dean of the Yale School of Architecture who's agreed to come down and take a look at this if she if she has the opportunity to do so so there's opportunity here and there's definitely plans that we can develop that incorporates the building. The building's not gonna fall over. It's structurally sound. And also, there's enough space to accommodate what the AOC needs and the courts need going forward. Okay, thank you. Mayor, did you have something to add? I left my mask up here. <laughs> uh, forgot it. 
but uh, heard two people today who flip-flopped on their positions. First one, in my opinion, was the Oldham County History Center, Historical Society or whoever they are. Early on in this project, they wrote a letter extensively saying how disappointed, how this, about the preservation site, and then they came around differently in a second go around, which that's okay, that's what they did. The second person is, is Jesse Pace. And I like to tell what I know, but Judge Vogel understood that Jesse Pace was a person who understood structures of this type to any degree you wanted his information, he could offer it. Judge Vogel asked him to investigate this building for him to report back to the fiscal court. Jesse Pace wore my phone out trying to tell me how bad this courthouse foundation was. Okay? He did. He said, he said, Mayor, this thing needs to be tore down from top to bottom or bottom to top because it's in, insalvageable. Now that was his report to me that he was going to offer to Judge of Oval in the physical court. Now where he's changed his testimony and his opinion on this, I don't know who's gotten to him, but somebody has. And I don't think it's right. Okay. Mr. Pace? Yes, um, I, can, I can concur with that, I guess. Um, Pretty much with that, when I met with Vogel originally, I think it was back in February 10th, I believe. I can't remember exactly. Get a little closer to the Sorry, mic, sorry. When I met with Vogel originally, my intention was just to see what could be salvaged from the building. Because he addressed me and said, look, it's coming down. There's nothing, no ram. There's, it's, it's coming down. So I was like, all right, I'm also a reclaimer. That's what I do. I try to repurpose. I actually gave Vogel, I don't have the report with me. I gave him a report stating that it can be saved and then it needs to be saved in this report. I purposely stayed neutral in this whole thing, just because I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member of this community. I don't want to be swayed one way or the other. But the fact that I found out later and after the fact that there was efforts to save it and it wasn't you know, on the chopping block at that moment, that's when I stepped in and said, okay, wait, I'm a preservationist, this is what I do, and this is what I take pride in. And I, I wish you all had the report, you all could read it. I gave it to Vogel. Um, yeah, that's, that's okay. thank point. you, sir. All right, uh, commissioners, we're down to about four minutes here. Are there, uh, Mr. Falvey, do you have a question? Okay. Yes, I'm not quite sure. I've heard different, different testimony on it. What percent of the old courthouse, I've heard less than 80% is historic, but maybe only 20% is historic. What are we trying to save here? That's, uh, Judge? And, and also, is Mr. Pace a structural engineer? No. Okay. You know, we want to stay on the high road here, you know, and as much as we can. Uh, Mr. Pace contacted me when he found out that the uh, building was, uh, we were going to demolish the building. Uh, I think he had interest in trying to uh, secure some of the uh, old wood in the ceiling for uh, his business. I asked him to, uh, you know, look into it. He presented himself as somebody who knew about buildings, and and so in the discussion had been out there. I asked him to, to look into it, and I, I think he did, and I agree with John. Uh, his uh, initial response to me was uh, pretty pessimistic. I believe he made some remark about uh, you'd have to take the whole thing down and build it back up brick by brick. Uh, as time went on and uh, the historic preservation people came on the scene here, I picked up a sense of shifting in his point of view. Uh, don't know why. Uh, I thought uh, he was a community volunteer. He did present me with a bill that I had not contracted for, and, but did pay. Uh, and uh, so, we have our disagreements with Mr. Pace. Uh, he, I think his father and him uh, will say are good at putting together old log cabins and, and uh, maybe other buildings I don't know about. Uh, I don't doubt his ability to do something. His father was an excellent person, well-respected, well-known, and I think he's learned and carried on from him. 
Now, whether or not his experience transfers into uh, a new building, much bigger, much heavier, with full of unexpected types of equipment, circumstances, accoutrements that were not ever thought of uh, when this building was built, I have no idea. To answer Mr. Falvey's question, the, my understanding is, based on my maintenance, I ask our maintenance department to tell me exactly how much square footage was in the entire structure, and they said 25,500. I said, how much is in the old initial, the front part of it, and they said 5,200 square feet. So 5,200 and, you know, I guess <laughs> it's 20% 20 of 25,000 square feet. So that's where I'm getting my number from. Uh, that's, that's, uh, I can't speak to anybody else's number. All right. And I would like to say, if I can have one more, I don't mean this negatively, a lot of people are speaking up, but all the people speaking up, if they can, can they produce one old building that they thought should come down? I mean, they all have a, a very, very predictable point of view that they're promoting. I mean, it's just, that's their point of view and that's what they want. I accept that, uh, but I would say the sum total of the people who carry that point of view, I'll give them credit and say, 300, 500 people. I don't really know how many, but I was elected by 65,000 people in this county to do the best that I can do for them while I hold this position. And that's, that's the point of view I'm taking. I had, there's thousands of people that are aware of this, but have not, you, you know, most people aren't motivated to say much if they're happy with the way things are going. It's the people who would disagree with it were motivated to come out and fight it. And I think all the opponents are basically extremely predictable in what, what they <laughs> would ex be expected to present. And that's, this is a bad idea. But none of them are gonna be here when the bills are paid, when the future goes on, most of them will melt into the you know, general population and that'll be the extent of it. But uh, the county government needs to function well. It does not need to pick up more on our general budget by hanging on to a building and building somewhere else. Somebody's got to pay the overhead of that. That's not easy, quick, or, uh, you know, it doesn't meet the, the, the easy solution that's put forward by most of the opponents. Oh, you can do this and you can do that. And this guy sketched this out. What he didn't tell you about that sketch is it comes down Second Street and he needs into the front yard. I mean, we didn't want to give up that front yard for our community. We thought that that was valuable space that everybody in the community can use, not just those who use the courthouse. Judge, I hate to interrupt, but we're, we are out of time. We have you know, expired our second uh, uh, time slot here. So um, we're, as I want to, our county attorney to explain to us, uh, commissioners, we are somewhat limited on what uh, the scope of our uh, what we can do today, and so um, I want to thank uh, the, the Judge Vogel and everyone that has been here today to speak uh, on behalf of this or in opposition in opposition to this, uh, uh, you know, the change of the courthouse uh, square here. But I uh, I think we need to move on, uh, and I will now at this point call on our county attorney John Carter. Uh, for guidance and comments uh, as we move forward uh, with any, uh, you know, decisions or what we need to, to do here uh, at the end of our docket. Mr. Carter. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, like I said at the beginning, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing that the commission uh, has to do in regard to the building of the courthouse. Um, the statute is clear. It's KRS 100. Point three six one, and it reads, nothing in this chapter shall impair the sovereignty of the Commonwealth of Kentucky over its, I can't read that, over its political subdivisions. Any proposal affecting land, land use by any department, commission, board, authority, agency, or instrumentality of state government, government shall not require the approval of the local, local planning unit. So the perp, and in regard to that, that means that the, um, the building of the courthouse is not subject 
uh, to the comprehensive plan, compliance with the comprehensive plan. It's not subject to any of the regulations to governing any other building or any or the um, renovation of any other building in in uh, the um, comprehensive plan or in the in the um, planning and zoning ordinances. Um, the section that requires the planning commission to the facilities committee to send a report within 60 days does not, does not apply to this building either. So the sole purpose of the meeting was to allow input, recommendations, and comments on what the county intends to do in the construction of the, of the courthouse and to allow that input to be taken into consideration in any further developments of that plan by, by fiscal court in the county. Mr. Carter, thank you. As, as our county attorney, we, it, you know, uh, value your advice and consent, I mean, and, and judgment and, and your research on this topic. So with that, uh, commissioners, I'm going to um, uh, close the docket PZ20012. And I will uh, call then or ask the commissioners if we could uh, get a motion to adjourn. Mr. Falvey? Make, make the motion to adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? Okay, we have a set, multiple seconds. Uh, uh, Mr. Elder, I recognize him as a second. Uh, with that, um, let's see, uh, we probably need to take a voice, I mean, a, a roll call vote on this, uh, Mr. McIntyre. No, just do by voice. Okay, all right. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to adjourn, adjourn signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, uh, no? No. Okay. The motion to adjourn is, uh, is done. We are adjourned. Thank you. Uh, I think 11. 11, I think. 11, so 11 to 1. Well, no, I, I, I don't vote, so it would be. You better count just to make sure we got 1, 2, 